Hey everyone, I'm going to give you a quick overview of design distribution and analysis of surveys in the JISC online surveys tool. So the page that I'm starting at is the page that you arrive at after you've logged in using your login credentials. So if you still need uh, an account, do contact your supervisor and ask them to set you up with one. So I'm starting from uh, the point after you've gotten your login credentials and this is the first landing screen that you're brought to on login. Now I've already got a test survey here um, on my on my dashboard. So if you want to create a new survey, you need to click on the create new tab. Give your survey a name. I'm going to call it just SO303 uh, Owen 2021. And once you do that, it will take you to this page here with three tabs on the top. So the first tab is the design tab. This is where you're going to set up your survey, set up your questions, add your questions, change the layout. And then after this, we'll look at the distribute tab, which is where you'll get the link to distribute your survey and the analyze tab where you can export the data from your survey. So the survey form is by default organized like this. Uh, it starts with these two sections called page one and final page. You can think of pages as sections. If we wanted to organize our survey into different sections, then we would need to create a page corresponding to each section. So I'm going to organize my survey into two pages. I'm going to add another one and call it section B. And I'm going to rename page one to section A. And generally speaking, these different sections will be organized by theme or by question type. Section A could be background or demographic questions and section B could be, uh, you know, the core of your survey or a set of attitudinal measures or a set of questions that address a specific topic. So if you've got multiple topics or something within your survey, then you might want to set up separate pages for those. But again, do remember to keep your survey, you know, as simple as possible. We also want to make sure that we have a conclusion, uh, which is our final page. We can rename that if we want. And as with every survey, you also want to make sure that you include a cover sheet. Now, again, as you're naming these sections, make sure that you do so with a view towards what your respondent is going to see. You don't want to give them in a complex titles or something that's not you know, quite obvious to what the section is about. So I'm going to call this introduction. And this is where I would paste in the contents of my cover sheet. So if I wanted to give um, a cover sheet that said uh, details about the survey, why the survey was being conducted, what the objectives were, um, introducing myself, my status as a student and so on, giving contact details for your supervisor, talking about how the data is going to be handled, guaranteeing confidentiality and anonymity and so on. So this is where you'll put the text of your cover sheet. So I'm going to show you how to add some questions. To add a question to your section, you need to first of all click item. And I'll show you the simplest case, which is the multiple choice case. Up here goes our question text. And let's say we're asking a background question about the respondent's highest level of education. And I'm not going to be too careful with the answer sets here. This is just for illustration. There's two ways to set this up. First of all, you can add an answer option here and then click to add the next answer option. So this is where I would put maybe primary, add another one, secondary, add another one, tertiary. Or I can write them in here like this in a row. And this is particularly useful if you're setting up multiple questions of the same type, if you want them separated. And it makes it a little bit easier to copy questions around. And again, if you just wanted to make slight variations to the response set, you might want to set them up this way. But you can also use this field here to add them separately and individually. And once I click Add Question, the question now snaps into Section A. And I can see here that I've got Question 1, Section A, as a multiple choice question with three options. The other version of this, then, is the multiple choice, multiple answer question. Um, if you can imagine using something like a deprivation index, you could ask, does your household have and then any of the following? And you could give a number of different options. So in the deprivation index that's used in the EU Silk, they ask about things like TV, um, fridge, freezer. They also ask about uh, the ability to pay for heating. Um, they also somewhat outdated, they ask for a camcorder. Nonetheless, when we add the question, we see here that now we have a multiple response set where we can give multiple answers, and the five options are TV, fridge, freezer, heating, and camcorder. And then finally, we will take a look at one more question type, which is the single line um, free text question. So if we want the respondent to write an answer in text form, uh, we can give them the option for just a single line or multiple lines. If we want to constrain it to a short answer, we might click this. If we want a long answer, we might click this. So the single line free text version is, it could be something like, where did you study? And we don't want to give 
then you know a full list of universities. Uh, this is assuming we would have filtered this previously to make sure that they could answer the question, of course, that they had um, attended a university or college if we did want to ask them this. And when we add this question, then you'll see that it gives it will give the respondent in the final version um, a question or a statement, and then they can have they will have a line in which they can write they can write an answer. Obviously, it's not a good idea to set up a question like this in this way, but again, it's just for illustration. And in section B, let's say we've got our background questions up here. And in section B, we want to include the main components of our survey. It could be our multiple choice questions or our attitudinal questions. So let's say we want to ask the respondent an attitudinal question. And let's say we want to ask them about different, about different aspects of their workplace. Um, and we can give them sort of a general statement at the top in the question text that would, you know, would you say your workplace? And we can give them in here a set of different uh, response options. So we can give them a set of responses on a five point scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And we could include here uh, different aspects of the respondent's workplace or different sort of qualities of the respondent's workplace. Let's say it's um, friendly, welcoming, hostile. Again, I'm just making this up as I go along. And when we click add question, you'll see that now it snaps to question B and the respondent is going to get a grid that looks something like this. If you are including multiple attitudinal questions um, on the same concept, that use the same rating scale like this. Again, you can vary the rating scale, of course, there's different ways of coming at this. Then it's a good idea to use this grid format to do so. Another way to measure an attitude or to set up an attitude question would be to set up a question like this, where you have an individual uh, single response question. But it makes the survey form a little bit long and in terms of organizing your data afterwards. It's perhaps not the best approach to use. And then finally, there's a couple of different options. We can ask the respondent to um, indicate a time or a date if we wanted to ask them when they started studying or when they started their last job, if we wanted to include a note clarifying something, if we wanted a, a field question or a filter question. Um, and again, there are other things we can do with this as well. If you look at um, the multiple choice question format, you'll see that there are these different advanced options um, below here. So if we had, let's say we wanted to filter our respondents, if we wanted to know whether respondents had engaged in a particular action or not. We could ask them, let's say, do you regularly attend church or religious services? And let's say we had a sub component of our survey that was asking people a whole bunch of different questions about their religion or religious practices. Check your spelling as well, just make sure your spelling is correct. Um, you can ask, you can set this to be optional or required. So again, some questions you might want to include as mandatory and if you show it as mandatory, if you check this box, it will flag to the respondent uh, in the question text that that question is mandatory. If you uncheck that, then if they don't answer the question, they'll get a warning before they try and move on to the next section that they need to do this. And if this is a, a basic filter question, we can just give them two options, yes or no. Again, the other way to do this would be to add yes here as one option set, no as another option set. And in this case, you don't need to include them down here in the box. So again, there's multiple ways to do these things. So now we have a mandatory question, which you can see here flagged with the asterisk, and we have this yes, no option down here. And then at the end, you might want to include a conclusion and a closing statement, which would thank your respondent for their time, again, reminding them how they can get in touch with you if they have any questions, um, and talking perhaps about what your future intentions are with regards to data that will be stored for a finite amount of time, that they won't be identifiable from any of the information they gave and so on. Although you would want to give that guarantee at the start so the respondent can give consent. So once you've set up your questions, the next thing you want to do is to preview the survey to see it from the respondent's point of view. So when you give out the survey, this preview button is going to show you what they will see when they take it. So in the first section, the introduction, they will encounter a cover sheet, um, you might want to also include um, an, an option here to ask them if they're okay with the conditions set out. You can include that by simply adding, adding an item within the introduction section. And then when they click next, you'll see here that the questions are organized by section. So we've got section A in this page, section B will be on the next page. And they also get a percentage counter that shows them how far through it they've completed. So we can click a couple of different options. This is a multiple response set. They can click as many as they wish. And 
you can give them again if you have set up any questions with an option to include text and um, they can include their text answers here in the next section then uh, we've put our attitudinal questions um, you can see here that they have a, they, they can click an option if they want to view these as separate questions it'll split them back out into in, into into different subsections um, but it's a little bit neater like this you see here that it's also identified this question as required so if they don't answer this they will be unable to they will be unable to proceed with the survey so we'll give our answers to this then and we click finish and at the conclusion page then we would find generally uh, some text there as well to describe what's going to happen with the data next so once you're happy with your survey um, you'll see here that also there is a help and support dialogue over here and this is really useful because it will talk you through all of the different survey options here as well you can alter that you can look at a simple map of the survey so it shows you in our one we've got introduction section a section b conclusion you can manipulate the survey appearance we can include um, a logo with the survey if we want we can change it there's a couple of different uh, color coordinated themes that you can use so if we wanted to include a logo we could hit save we can alter the survey settings uh, the language the time of the survey uh, you can give a finish later option so the respondent will get a link that they can come back to uh, to finish the survey afterwards and then uh, you can also include a section on contact uh, contact messages you can give your contact details so the next thing we want to do is to organize our distribution once you're happy with your survey and you're happy that it's all set up correctly you can set an opening time so if you want the survey to uh, start or only become available at a particular day you can set that day here using the calendar so if i wanted mine to be available from next monday i could set it to open from let's say we could ask it to open at 9 a.m on the 15th so if we wanted it to open say 9 a.m uh, monday morning we can set the time in there and if we wanted it to close uh, let's say we want to have it open for just for just say one week the survey open until the following monday then we can close it off on the sunday night um, of course you would probably want to keep it open a bit longer than this and close it off uh, Sunday night let's say at 23.55 there are also a number of different options around survey responses um, you don't need to set a maximum um, on this probably not a good idea you can set when the survey tool emails you about new responses you can just get it to give you a digest of responses on a Friday um, you can redirect the results of the survey to go to a different email address and there's all sorts of other conditions you can you can you can set as well you can also customize the link if you want you can customize this extension by default it's just going to be the title of your survey and when you're happy with those settings you can click save so going back up here to um, survey launchpad you see here that now we have the option to launch the survey so i'm going to change the open date so that it's instantly open um, so i can show you in the preview table uh, what you know just some of the other things we can do in terms of getting it to export data and once you're happy with that then in survey launchpad you can click launch survey and then the survey will be open so now if i want to distribute this survey uh, all i need to do is to take this link this public url i can copy that link place it in an email address it also gives you automatically some links to tweet the survey you can share it on twitter share it on facebook share it on google plus and there's also some embedding code as well if you wanted to put this in an email or put it up on a dedicated web page somewhere so this is how to launch it and how to distribute it when your survey is complete uh, when the time period is finished uh, when the survey closes if you want to export the data so actually we'll just see what the survey looks like here if we take the email address of the survey and paste it into our browser and complete it we'll just complete one example of this so that we have some information um, in the in the analysis tool so let's see here, i'm just going to go quickly through one of these survey forms we'll complete it here i'll click no and then when it's finished sometimes it takes a while for the tool to update we see here that we have it's showing us one respondent uh, is in progress on part four of the survey and we have one completed response when your survey is finished and you're ready to export your data you can go to the analyze tab you'll see here i've just completed three responses so that we have some data to demonstrate this with and from the analyze tab there are several options you can filter the responses over here if you just want to limit it to a particular date range or question range 
there's a summary option here which you're brought to by default and that shows you a summary of all the different answers so far so at any point during the survey you can check in here and look at the distribution of scores there's also a tab to browse the individual responses you can assess the number of views if you've got that enabled and there are some advanced options here where you can do some preliminary analysis so from the summary tab once your survey is finished you can go up here to export and then there's two options you can either download this view as a pdf or you can export the response data so if you want to open your response data in a software program like SPSS or you want to export the answer set to a spreadsheet this is the button you need to click now to get this into SPSS you need to take care to make a couple of settings this is especially important if you're using rating scales so there's a few options down here you can ignore most of these if you wish there is an option to include the date of submission if that's something you want to keep track of but down here you do need to check this option to code responses and you do also need to check combined scale rank values into a single column where possible. This is because whenever you have a ranking question or a grid question set, unless you check this box, it will drop every uh, answer option as an individual variable. Whereas what you want is to be able to analyze this as a single variable where all the responses from strongly disagree to strongly agree are included in a single variable. It'll be apparent if you haven't checked this because you'll have an excessive number of variables. You'll have many more variables than you have questions. And then finally, you want to check the right format. So to export it to SPSS, go down here and check SPSS.sav. And when you click export, it will download and you can click here to open the data set. If you have SPSS installed or you can access SPSS through apps anywhere, in which case you need to save that data file somewhere on your computer and then open it within SPSS by browsing to the folder. So when it's open, you'll be brought to variable view. And here you can see all of your variables set up with the variable label corresponding to the question title. And your values are also set up as well. So you'll see by clicking into values for our first question on education, we've got our different categories of response coded one, two, and three. For our um, multi-item scales, we've got each individual item coded as one. If there's no answer given to that, then it's simply coded as missing or there's no response included. And for our attitudinal questions, we have, again, because we've checked that box in the data export field uh, within JISC, we have each of these questions condensed into one variable. So all of our response sets are included within this one variable. In data view, we can see that it's exported uh, two of our cases. So we've got one set of responses here. We've got the second set of responses here. 